Okay, so, uh, we need to talk about this. So, you know how there used to be this teen boy band, and they were all brothers, and they were disgustingly wholesome, and very outwardly religious, like, most people knew that about them before anything else, they were very, very white and very religious. Okay, well, what would happen if all of a sudden the lead singer of the band became an adult and decided he wanted to be this grown-up, sexy, pop heartthrob, and he actually made himself over like that and put himself out there, and against all odds, people started actually buying it and made him a hit? Imagine that. Well, I can imagine it, because it actually happened. This song exists, and the song I'm talking about is, of course, the big comeback single from Donny Osmond, Soldier of Love, from 1989. <laughs> what the hell? People actually bought this? People actually bought all grown up non-child star Donny Osmond as like this hot sexy pop star. How the hell did that happen? I could talk about this weird blip of music history forever and I, I wish I could because I know a whole lot about Donny Osmond. And I actually know very little about Nick Jonas or the Jonas Brothers who I'm supposed to be talking about. Look, I'm trying to catch up, but the Jonas Brothers were one of those pop culture phenomena that I missed completely. Yeah, they were like a lot of teen pop acts in that they were huge, hot music superstars who were weirdly easy to ignore. Even if you listen to a lot of pop music, like I did. I knew they were religious, and Disney owned their souls and bodily organs. I guess I heard this song once or twice. I, I think I thought it was a Shania Twain song. I've gone back and listened to them. They're okay. I would have been fine if they stuck around. I mean, Hanson evolved into a pretty good rock band. They could have too. But there are many ways to age into adulthood. Gracefully, like Hanson. Complete disastrously, like Lindsay Lohan. Or the high-risk, high-reward approach favored by former Disney stars. Look at me, I'm sexy and adult and shit. Yes, that happens to the male teenage idols just as often as the female ones. Usually just happens more smoothly, so you don't notice it. But of course, sometimes you do. And you don't even have to be a kid for this to happen to you. Being forced against your will to be squeaky clean does weird things to your brain. Guys, please get this thing outside. I can't believe this. I just vacuumed in here. <laughs> get diarrhea starts squirting out of his ass, and it won't stop. It's like a hemorrhaging shit ass. If you think that's any different than Miley twerking on Robin Thicke, think again. So, Nick Jonas' approach to his young adulthood is the, is the Marky Mark approach. Leather jacket, abs, girl look at that body. I work out. Still has a face like a character from Ants, but, you know, I'm not the demographic he's trying to impress, so whatever. He's also changed directions musically. He's not doing teeny bopper, pop, rock anymore. Now he's all R&B, I guess. Is he pulling it off? Honestly, uh, I wasn't impressed at first, but I don't know. Performance-wise, I think the kid is growing on me. I wish you'd save a little bit just for See, it, it, it treads the whole pop heartthrob line without going too far, which he apparently was tempted to do. You're too fucking beautiful, and everybody wants your sex. Yeah. I think he might have also wanted to ride naked on a wrecking ball, and they wouldn't let him. But yeah, he doesn't take it too far, which is good. And more importantly, well, let's go back to Donnie for a second. This song faded from memory almost immediately. And rightly so, it's too derivative. It's really obvious who he was trying to be. Yeah, it was pretty clear George Michael was what Donnie was shooting for. And why wouldn't he? George Michael was stylish, good looking, confident, presumed heterosexual at the time. I don't think Donnie could grow a five o'clock shadow like George, but in that innocent, innocent era that was the 80s, aspiring to be George Michael was setting your sights pretty high. But the reason Donnie couldn't keep this up is because it was too similar. We didn't need grown-up Donnie because we already had a George Michael. Pretty shortly afterwards, we decided we didn't need the original George Michael either, so there you go. But is that true of Nick Jonas? Is he just copying somebody else? I don't think so. Do we have any guy right now doing what Nick is trying here? The whole pop idol heartthrob, I'm buff with boyish good looks, check out my sexy falsetto thing? Oh, baby, I'm playing on you tonight. Yeah, I'll take Nick Jonas. He's better at it than Adam Levine. And when I first heard this song, I wasn't that impressed. I thought it was too Maroon 5. And when I say Maroon 5, I don't actually mean it sounded like Maroon 5. I'm just using Maroon 5 in the sense of uninspired. That's an official definition now. But yeah, I don't know, it's, it's smooth enough. I'm, 
yeah, like I said, it's more on me. It's, I'm not that bothered by it. I'm willing to give it a pass. Well, that concludes the style portion of the review. Now let's talk about content. I don't like the way he's looking at you. I'm starting to think you want him to. If the whole point of this song is to introduce us to the new, aggressively sexual Nick Jonas, this is a weird song to do it with. The point is that he gets jealous and stupid. It's an apology song. That's kind of a tough subject to try and flex to. Hey girl, how'd you like to get with an idiot who can't control his emotions and will embarrass you in public? Aw yeah. I can't think of anything less attractive than jealousy. I mean, envy is one of the deadly sins. Deadly sins are supposed to be fun! I would happily lust, wrath, pride, glutton, and greed all goddamn day. Or at least I would if I weren't so goddamn lazy. But envy? No one enjoys that. It's just a pain in the ass for everyone involved. And, and just speaking as a guy, I don't relate to what Nick's dilemma is here. I, I, I don't understand jealousy. Why the hell would you even bother? I, I don't get it. Not to brag, but I'm not a jealous guy. Like, I've never been jealous. I have risen above that particular character flaw by one, not caring about anyone but myself, and two, not understanding even the basics of human interaction. Probably why I've been cheated on multiple times. Hey, I was wondering if um you, you wanted to catch a movie with me later and um... Oh, you're hanging out with your ex-boyfriend. Again. Gosh, it's so cool that you guys are close. It's so mature of you. Well, okay, talk to you later. So yeah, I could probably stand to be a little more suspicious than I am. But still, that doesn't make jealousy any more attractive. I mean, who acts like that? I can think of other songs about jealousy, but they're not hot. John Lennon, he's, you know, sad and apologetic and humble. Taylor Swift is like his psycho demon hell beast. It, you know, it doesn't work, right? Then again, I have distinct memories of Usher confessing to a girl how many times he's cheated on her while dancing and stripping. It was one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. But apparently it only made him hotter. And the lesson I took from that is, girls really like it when a guy can be honest and admit his mistakes. And that a six-pack doesn't hurt. I need to do more sit-ups. But yeah, I can see how being open about his jealousy issues could actually be attractive. I mean, we all have baggage, no one's perfect. He's just explaining what goes through his mind when he gets like this. He puffs his chest up, he turns his cheap music up. Actually, is that line cheap music up or I turn my cheek, comma, music up? Neither of those really make sense. Wait, what is that line? Chin music? I don't know what Jonas thinks that phrase means, but he's probably wrong. But anyway, the point is, he talks about puffing his chest, his face turning red, so, you know, he knows. He, he's making himself look stupid. He knows that. He knows that none of this is her fault. It's not your fault. Yeah, this is his problem, not hers. See? He gets it. just say right now that he has the right to be hellish? The right to be hellish? Holy crap! That is... Well, it's a terrible rhyme for one. I mean, that, that was just very clunky and forest. I, uh, that could have been written so much more smoothly. I don't, I don't like how that lyric was constructed at all. More importantly... It's my right to be hellish. No! No! You do not have the right to be hellish. A guy getting jealous sometimes, it happens. A guy saying, I have the right to be hellish? Ladies, 
You see this picture of a bunch of Chinese people holding up this massive communist flag? That gigantic flag is nowhere near as big a red flag as a guy saying, I have the right to be hellish. No, you don't have the right to be hellish, you goddamn weirdo. Who the hell says that? I don't care how much he spends the rest of the song apologizing. That line immediately undoes all of it. It's like the worst possible thing he could have said. It's like a gun safety instructor using the sights of his revolver to pick his teeth. It should absolutely never, ever happen. It's my right to be hellish. There had to be something better to go there. I, I shouldn't get so overzealous. I pick fights with other fellas. You can stand under my umbrellas. I eat hot dogs with relish. I don't know anything. Man, I was giving this song way too much credit. That, that one line casts a horrible dark shadow over the entire rest of the song. You're too sexy, beautiful. Everybody wants a taste. That's why. See, I'm jealous because you're so sexy. Me being an asshole is a compliment. I wish, I wish you didn't have to post it out. I wish you'd save a little bit just for me. Uh, isn't she? Saving a little bit for you, I mean. Specifically the part where she goes home with you and exchanges fluids with you. You know, as in not cheating on you. Look, either she's given you a reason to distrust her, or she hasn't. She flirting with other guys, is she crossing the line, you know, deliberately making you feel uncomfortable? If so, dump her. If not, get over it. And considering you're going on and on about how it's not her fault, it sounds like she hadn't done a goddamn thing. So shut up. Shut the hell up. Or, I mean, I mean, put yourself in her shoes. If she was doing this to you, would you enjoy it? Because you know. song about? So if I am to understand this song correctly, Nick Jonas's jealousy is one, something he's very sorry about, two, totally justified, and three, actually pretty hot. Look, there is only one message Nick Jonas intended with this song, and it has nothing to do with jealousy. The message is, I like touching ladies because I am a grown-up who has sexual relations with females. I don't think any one of this song's fans actually cares about what he's singing about. And that's the only reason I can think of why more people aren't hammering this poor kid into the dust. Cause, holy damn, when you really start listening to this song, it's creepy as hell. Hellishly creepy, you could say. And look, you remember Robin Thicke and Blurred Lines? A lot of people said that song was, quote, rapey. I said that. But it's not like he came out and sang, I will rape you. Meanwhile, Nick Jonas, in his own words, believes it is his right to be possessive. If we made Robin Thicke own rape, why doesn't Nick Jonas have to own abuse? How is Nick Jonas getting away with this? Oh, right. It's just like the Adam Levine thing. It's hard to care when there's someone doing the same thing but a billion times worse.